Hello, I'm Nils. In this video, I'll be looking at BMI or body mass index and why it can be very misleading as a diagnostic tool. Nothing in this video is intended as or should be taken as medical advice. Body mass index is a diagnostic tool that's based on ascertaining the relationship between our height and weight. To calculate it, there are different formulas depending on whether we're measuring in pounds and inches or using the metric system. Most people these days just step on a scale to get their BMI or use an online calculator. In one sense, our BMI can give us a rough idea about our state of health. If we're 5 foot 10 and weigh 350 pounds, there's an obvious problem. But if we're 5 foot 10 and weigh 170 or 185 or 200, if we exercise and are building muscle, BMI as a tool for indicating health issues starts to fall apart. BMI was developed originally as a means of estimating what percentage of the population was obese. Some correlation was found between conditions such as cancer and diabetes and BMI, and its use as a diagnostic tool eventually became widespread. If we're underweight, according to the theory, our BMI will supposedly be less than 18.5, if we're of normal weight, it'll be between 18.5 and 24.9. If we're overweight, it'll be between 25 and 29.9. If we're obese, we'll have a BMI of 30 or above. The assumption behind these figures is that if our BMI is too high, we're in some kind of imminent danger and should start doing things to lower it. That may all sound good on paper. Excess body fat does matter and can be an indication of health problems that could shorten our lives. But in reality, the relationship between weight and height turns out to be misleading because BMI calculators are just looking at weight without differentiating between fat and muscle. So that means that people who are in peak physical condition, such as athletes who have an optimal amount of both muscle and body fat, can be classified as overweight or even obese when we're using BMI as the metric. Another major problem is that BMI doesn't measure body fat distribution or where the fat is stored in our bodies. If some excess fat is stored in our abdominal area, it means we have a lot of visceral fat, the kind of fat that's associated with an increased risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and stroke. But if we have the same amount of fat stored down around our hips, there is no such association. Another problem that's been in the news recently is that what's considered a healthy amount of body fat, assuming that it's safely distributed on the body, has been found to vary between different genders and between people from different parts of the world or the different so-called races. If we set aside BMI, we find two things that are much more meaningful. One is our percentage of body fat. There are a couple of problems with this though also. One is that scales that measure it are notoriously inaccurate. And even if they're right that we have some excess body fat, as I mentioned a moment ago, they can't tell us where the excess fat is being stored, which means that it may not really even be excess. So it turns out that the best and most useful measurement may actually be the ratio between our waist circumference and our height, with an ideal ratio being around one to two. If our height is 72 inches, for example, a healthy waist circumference would be 36 inches, or a little bit less. If our height is 64 inches, a healthy waist circumference would be 32 inches or less, and so on and so forth. The height to waist circumference ratio isn't perfect. It can't tell us if we're becoming dangerously underweight, but it still appears to be a far better indicator of health than BMI, and it's an easy way of getting an idea of where our fat is being stored. Now, one problem I should probably mention is that our waist size can vary depending on whether we've been eating or drinking. So it's good to measure it at a time when we've been fasting for a while. 
for example, when we first get up in the morning. Another issue that some people have brought up is that if we're belly breathers, if we tend to be in the habit, perhaps from doing yoga, of taking in a breath and inflating our abdomen, then that can also throw off the measurement. So the thing to do in that case would just be to stand upright and to make sure that you're breathing from your chest, not your belly, at the time that you're doing the measurement. This video is brought to you by Do Not Age, a good source for anti-aging supplements. I'm currently taking their NMN, NR, creatine, CERT6 activator, glycine with NAC, and several of their other supplements. For a 10% discount on their products, use the discount code PATHWAYS in all caps. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.